What am I winning? Yeah, weblog because there's been quite a lot of high profile news yeah. about that recently. Yeah. So, where does that decision? It's good to have a yes in the conversation. Yeah. Great mix My name is Tom Rigglesworth and I'm a work inspiration student. This opportunity gave me lots of experience in many different areas, from drawing ideas together as a team to writing those ideas into a presentation. Hi, Australia! My name is Anjali Kumar and I, along with my twin sister, Tina, say hello. hello. Recently met Sir Michael Rake at World Skills London. We cheekily went up to him and asked him if we could shadow him for a day. We followed him up and are here today to interview him about work inspiration in Australia. So, over to Tina, tell us more. Like Anthony, I met Sir Michael Rake at the World Skills event. And you're probably watching me in Australia right now. Hopefully, the weather there is much better than how it is here in the UK. As a project director, Mick of Work Inspiration is going over to Australia next week. We thought, why not ask Sir Mike Wait that why should big businesses in Australia adopt the Work Inspiration initiative? So let's go and see. Sir Mike, why do you feel that big businesses should give a certain percentage of their profits to charity? Well, I think actually this is about, it's, it's a symbolic thing. I think for many years now, you know, from the time many, many years ago in the Brixton riots, more than 25 years ago, business in this country realised that there was a business interest in really ensuring their communities worked. And it came back to something that was said in the healthy back streets, healthy high streets. And I think business realised then, far-sighted businesses realised that you had to do something more than just make profits. You had to invest in your community. You had to create opportunities for young people. You had to invest. If that was true 25 years ago, it's dramatically true today. And if we look at the current economic situation where we have serious levels of unemployment, youth unemployment, where we have you know, an emerging divide between the have and the has not that's going to get worse in the next two to three years, whatever happens, I think it's critically important that business plays its part. And I think the 1% is more a symbol of, of a commitment to ensure that a company you know, donates some of its resources, cash, time, technology, experience, into the community so the community benefits. That's why. And I think it's worth just saying that for me always this, this issue around you know, corporate social responsibility is a win-win situation. You know, whichever way you want to come at this, morally it's the right thing to do for companies to do that and business-wise it's the right thing to do. It's absolutely clear in the work that we've done that when I was chairman of BITC four or five years ago, all the work we did demonstrated that if you just want to look at it from a business point of view, those companies that have a good reputation for their, their attitude towards the environment, towards their communities, all other things being equal, of course price and quality of product, they do better in the marketplace. All other things being equal, they can recruit and retain better people. All other things being equal, they're more productive because the benefits of you know, getting involved, for example, in mentoring programs. You know, when I was at KPMG, we did a huge amount of mentoring and you quickly realize whether that's head teachers in parts of London you know, with huge pupil staff ratios, with large numbers of people not speaking English, you know, what you realize very quickly is what the head teachers have to do and for the people who are doing the mentoring, there is they learn more than the people being mentored. So, you know, in summary, this is something that's symbolic of what's important and it's good for the companies, good for its employees, good for communities and it really works. And I think the problems we see in the world today where the young people no longer have credibility in any of the institutions, they don't believe in politicians, don't believe in banks, they don't believe in newspapers, you know, that, that we have to re-establish trust by the younger generation in business, which business is the only thing that can deal with the issues around jobs and employment and investment. Thank you. It's a bit of a long answer. No, no, that's, that's exactly answer. what we're looking for. Thank you. So why should big businesses help young people in work experience? Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is a really, really important issue. Um, you know, until last year I was chairman of the Commission for Employment and Skills, and even before this current crisis, going back in 
we were becoming seriously worried by what we were seeing in terms of youth unemployment. Uh, you're beginning to see the statistics of youth unemployment in the UK, in the United States, head towards 20%. Beginning to see youth unemployment in Spain at 40%. Youth unemployment in the Middle East at 50%. And at that time, we were getting increasingly concerned that that would lead, as it has led to, the core, not the only issue, around the issues we've seen in the Arab Spring, is disenfranchisement and poverty and lack of work opportunity. So it's, it's really a worry. And I think also the statistics in the UK that we've done show that if people are unemployed for a year, they're very, un very difficult to get employed. You know, and that is like a cancer of society if you don't give young people the opportunity to work. And that's why we really tried, you know, we did some work between the Commission, actually, and the business and the community to try and set up that work inspiration program when 2008, 9 when the downturn occurred. We really tried to convince companies, which most work convinced very easily, that we need to have, find a way to at least give people work experience because then you create a much greater opportunity for them to be employable because they see that people have worked with XYZ company or whatever, They've got experience of work. And employers are very concerned, you know, in the UK specifically around, you know, the, the poor quality of education in many parts of the country. So a lack of basic skills of literacy, numeracy, which is important and an important part of this, but also just employability skills, you know, you know, what it is to turn up, to be motivated, to be to communicate, to, you know, be positive uh, in whatever it is you do. So I, I think this work experience program is incredibly important and we at BT in a modest way, I mean we've opened up I think 4,000 opportunities for people to come and have work experience. We're trying to offer as many apprenticeship opportunities as we can. Unfortunately they're still quite limited relative to the demand but we're trying to do that and we think it's very very important that everybody who can do this provides some practical work experience which I think will really, you know, um, make it easier for people to, to get work and, and as the economy as it will do improves and as companies begin to you know invest again I think that will be of huge benefit to the people who have done the, the work experience program and you've done one of these programs and, um, yes. and I, you, it's you, fantastic it's yeah fantastic. it is it, it works brilliantly I mean yeah I got a lot out of it and I've Good. spoken to lots of other students as well and I've heard yeah. very similar things so yeah I can, definitely vouch for that. And I think it's for everyone and you know we've, we've talked about it before is and maybe what we've got to do is you know people who are at college or university or wherever doing something in their holidays but it's more than that we need to reach out to people who've been unable to get jobs when they've left college or school uh, we need to reach out to communities where people come from you know more from broken families or you, you know socially deprived areas where sometimes it's very difficult you know, so we, we've got to sort of find ways to reach out and give opportunities to people to get a chance to get work experience. You know, that's what we're going to try and do. And sharing it, I mean, is a, it's an interesting statistic. There, um, because big companies, we can help, if you will, because we, we have the capability to provide those opportunities. But real growth in employment is going to come from small and medium-sized enterprises, and it's quite interesting. There are 27 million SMEs in the European Union, 27 million. If every one of them just hired one person, you do completely away with all the unemployment and youth issues across the whole of Europe. So it just requires 27 million companies to hire one person each extra, and you'd eliminate most of the surplus unemployment. And so I mean, it's a very simplistic, but it just shows you. And so, and I think what the SMEs are looking for, you know, because they don't have the resource, they need people who want to work, you know, keen to work. Who, who are positive and who turn up on time and all those things and sometimes that's missing in some parts of the country and for some people so that's why I think it's uh, so important and hopefully you know so valuable mm -hmm. valuable for people who've got the, 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 the you know the, the, the enthusiasm ready to get experience but also important for people who may not yet have that enthusiasm may not have been exposed to the positive sides of business because all they hear about it's maybe the negative sides of, of business right now, so that's why I think it's important. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you talk about it gives a sense of morality to the companies, yeah. etc., and things like that. What do you see the measurable benefits as being for a big business? Well, I think they're very clear. I think all the evidence shows that if, if you take the right attitude, first of all, at a macro level, it comes back to you know healthy back streets, 
healthy high streets. So at a retail level, we want our communities to be successful, we want people to be employed, because they buy things, they do things, they, you know, that's a macro level economic environment. Having the opposite end of the scale, if you have deprived areas, you're just going to get crime and instability and other problems. So that's, at, a, at an individual company level, all the, it's absolutely clear that if you do these things, you improve the morale and efficiency and productivity of your own workforce because they take pride in what the company's doing. They take, you know, practical benefit from getting involved because we, we at BT, for example, you know, it's not all about cash. You know, it's the old thing about, you know, buy a man a mission to fish, teach a man to fish, you know. Uh, and, and so we try and do a lot of volunteering as well. So volunteering, getting into communities, working with people who need help, mentoring people, be it in schools in deprived areas, be it police, local police chiefs, believe it, whoever, you know, can be hugely beneficial to the individuals as well as to the company. So it's a, it really is a kind of, you know, benefit. I mean, you certainly see if you, you know, when, when I was in KPMG, we used to recruit 15,000 graduates a year from around the world. And everyone said, oh, the culture's different in every country. But I tell you what, for the younger generation, they all care about the same things. They want to work for companies that have high level of integrity, responsible toward their community, towards their environment, who try to give young people opportunities, who mentor them, who develop them, who give them responsibility. And frankly, for, there is no country in the world where people don't think that now. You know, so it, it's for, for, for any organization, I think it's of enormous benefit for them corporately and individually to be involved. Thank you. That's great.